The universe looks like a vast empty ocean sprinkled with the rare islands of galaxies, but this is an illusion. Just a tiny fraction of all atoms are found in galaxies, while the rest is thought to be drifting in between in the intergalactic medium. Like the roots of some massive tree, gas spreads out from each galaxy, gravity funneling fresh mass into this dense, cosmic forest. Here in the intergalactic medium are the raw materials of creation, hydrogen and helium, woven into sheets and filaments that flow into galaxies, where they eventually create stars. But if we look closely, we see who is in charge, quasars, the most powerful objects. As small as a grain of sand compared to the Amazon River, they reside in the centers of some galaxies, shining with the power of a trillion stars, blasting out huge jets of matter, completely reshaping the cosmos around them. They are so powerful that they can kill a galaxy. What are they, and how do they mold the universe's structure at their whim? Everywhere you look, weird things in the sky in the 1950s, astronomers notice mysterious loud radio waves everywhere. They were named quasi-stellar radio sources or quasars because they were dots like stars but were seen in radio waves rather than visible light. Everything about them was strange. Some flickered, others emitted high-energy X-rays and radio waves, but all seemed tiny. They also moved extremely fast, as much as over 30% of the speed of light. The only explanation was that they must have been so distant that their apparent speed was the universe's expansion, moving them away from us. But these enormous distances meant that quasars couldn't just be stars, but the active cores of galaxies billions of light years away. And it gets crazier. To appear so bright and loud, given these vast distances, they are thousands of times brighter than the Milky Way. Monsters explode and scream into the void with violence not thought possible before. As we mapped the sky, we discovered over a million quasars. And they all seem to be very far away. Looking into space, far away, means long ago because the light takes so long to reach us. Quasars were common in the early universe, having peaked 10 billion years ago when galaxies and the universe were still very young. Let's go back in time, just 3 billion years after the Big Bang, and see what happened back then. The incredible power of quasars how could an early baby galaxy be so incredibly bright and violent? All that light and radiation couldn't be stars, as there weren't nearly enough of them. And since galaxies tend to grow with time by merging, the starlight from small galaxies shouldn't be far brighter than any galaxy today. Only one way to generate the vast energy a quasar shines is by feeding supermassive black holes. We still don't know how they formed, but every galaxy has one in its center. But how can the brightest things in the universe be black holes, which trap anything and everything that crosses their event horizon? A quasar's light is not coming from inside these black holes. Instead, it comes from the space around them, a massive orbiting disk of gas called an accretion disk. Quasars use the same fuel as stars to shine, matter. It is just that black holes are the most efficient engines for converting matter into energy in the universe. The energy released by a value falling into a black hole can be 60 times greater than that released by nuclear fusion in the core of a star. Because the energy released by a black hole comes from gravity, not from nuclear reactions, matter falling into a black hole speeds up to almost the speed of light before it crosses the event horizon, buzzing with an incredible amount of kinetic energy. Of course, once inside the black hole, it takes that energy with it. You only get to witness this energy if you drop your matter correctly. Fall straight down, and the outside universe gets nothing. But when you have a lot of importance, it spirals incredibly fast toward the event horizon, forming a disk. Collisions between particles and friction heat it to hundreds of thousands of degrees. In a space not much bigger than our solar system, the core of a galaxy can release many times more energy than all its stars combined. This is what a quasar is, a supermassive black hole having a feast. And these black holes eat a lot. Typical quasars consume 1 to 100 Earth masses of gas per minute. 10 billion years ago, the universe was about a third of its current size, so the intergalactic medium was much less spread out, meaning the filaments of gas around quasars could feed them a banquet, 
making them vomit enormous amounts of light and radiation. The brightest quasars power jets, tangling the magnetic field of the matter around them into a narrow cone. Like a particle accelerator, they launch enormous beams of matter out, plowing through the circumgalactic medium, forming plumes of matter that grow to hundreds of thousands of light years. It's almost unfathomable in scale. A tiny spot in a galaxy carving out patches of the universe 100 thousands of light years long. But quasars can't eat for long, maybe a few million years, because their feast ultimately kills their galaxy. How quasars kill galaxies, okay, perhaps killing is a bit of an exaggeration. A galaxy is still there after its quasar turns off. But it will never be the same again. Among the hottest and brightest things in the universe, quasars break their galaxies by overheating them and stopping star formation. Hot gas cannot form stars. This sounds odd because stars are gas that collapsed in on itself and then got hot. But atoms are moving quickly in a cloud of already hot gas. When they collide, they hit hard, exerting pressure that resists gravity's squeeze, so hot gas can't form stars. Instead, the best gas for creating leads is already cold and won't put up a fight when it's time to collapse into a star. On top of that, quasars push gas out of their galaxies. Not only does this starve the quasar, but its galaxy loses the raw materials for new stars. As sad as this sounds, it might be suitable for life. The alternative can be far more dangerous, too many stars. New stars forming is usually followed by massive stars exploding in supernovae, so planets would be burned sterile. But of course, it's more complicated. Like the intricacies of our planet's biosphere, every piece of the galaxy depends on and influences every other part of the galactic environment. While hot things, like quasars and supernovae, tend to push gas out of the universe, shockwaves and quasar jets can also compress the gas, making new stars, at least for a short time. And gas that leaves will mix with gas coming back in and be recycled into the galaxy. But in general, we would not exist today without things becoming more chill. This brings us to our final question, did the Milky Way have a quasar in the past? It's unclear if every galaxy went through a quasar phase, but understanding distant quasars may provide clues to the history of the Milky Way. Galaxies need to do a better job of preserving their history. Like sand on a beach, the endless churning mixes away the clues to their past. It's possible the Milky Way was once a quasar, which may have allowed our supermassive black hole, Sagittarius a star, to have grown to 4 million times the Sun's mass. But sadly, we don't know its ancient history. And as dormant as it is now, Sagittarius a star could become a quasar. In a few billion years, the Milky Way will merge with Andromeda. We've seen over a hundred double quasars in galaxies smashing together, where fresh gas is provided for the central black holes. But it won't last for long. When galaxies merge, so do their supermassive black holes, sinking into the center of their new universe, kicking up dust and stars in every direction. We don't know whether this will happen, but it would indeed be an incredible sight. Some beings in the far future will witness it and be in awe of what they see. But you don't have to wait that long. There are plenty of fascinating things to explore here on this planet, if you know how to understand them. To help you with that, we are creating a series of lessons to take your scientific knowledge to the next level. Those lessons will give you a deeper understanding of the topics from our most popular videos, from rabies and mammalian metabolism to climate science. There's also a lesson coming on black holes, where you can delve into the fundamental principles behind their formation and behavior. A deeper understanding will also help you appreciate their role in powering the quasars discussed in this video. Because we know that to learn something, you've got to do it. You'll walk in the footsteps of a hacker to discover why some passwords take decades to crack, explore how satellites in space know that your rideshare driver is just down the street, learn why your favorite helpline video might buffer on YouTube, and more. Thank you for watching our video, please like and subscribe for more amazing content.